This is my CEF50 DIY e-mountain bike, which I built in a previous video. It's super light at only 45 pounds, but I wanted to make it even lighter. So to do that, what I did is I embarked on building my own battery. This battery here is the battery that it came with. It's a monster. It's 720 watt hours. It fits in the down tube like this and it lasts forever. I found that with the type of riding I was doing, I really wasn't using it to its full advantage as most of my rides were one hour, two hour because I have trails nearby my house. So what I did is I built my own. This is my own uh, concoction here and I'm gonna guide you through how I built it. I'll have links to all the parts, all the 3D print files, everything like that. And you can save five pounds by doing this. So now this bike weighs a respectable 40, actually it's under 40 pounds now. So the 720 watt hour battery uh, comes in this aluminum case, which by itself weighs a lot. Um, it uses high quality uh, Samsung 21700 cells. And I can pop this off, you can see um, they lie lengthwise in the case. So this is what the cells look like. Um, and they go like this. So what I did is I built essentially a battery that's half this. 360 watt hours and uses half the amount of cells. The exact same ones. These are Samsung 2170 cells. And um, I put them in an orientation up and down. And in fact, they just fit into the frame. It actually fits better than the OEM battery with this case. It's a little bit more snug. Um, so that's uh, basically what I'm going to show you how to build. Um, obviously, you have to take out the motor on this bike to get access to that. Uh, but let's get going. So the first thing I did was I designed and 3D printed battery holders to keep the cells aligned and perfectly spaced to fit in the case that I was going to put them in. So now I've printed the battery casings. Um, I cut up these nickel strips in these sort of grid patterns and now I'm about to spot weld them onto the battery. Um, I'm going to be using this uh, inexpensive spot welder I got from AliExpress, links in below. Uh, it's under 20 bucks. Uh, you can set different power levels, uh, you can put a delay on it, that sort of thing. Um, it comes with these two probes. I 3D printed a little bracket just to keep the, the tip space exactly where I want them. And I'm powering it with a portable jump pack, you know, for boosting cars. Um, you can use a car battery uh, or get a spot welder that has its own power source. But anyways, I'm going to get going on that now. Now that the top side nickel strips are all welded on, uh, I can go ahead and weld the uh, nickel strips on the bottom. So now all the nickel strips are spot welded on. Um, mm -hmm. I've checked with a voltmeter uh, across the positive and the negative terminals and I'm getting 36 volts total, which is what we want. Um, now I'm gonna glue on this BMS, the battery management system onto the side here and then connect by soldering each one of these balance wires to the tabs that I have uh, on here. Then I'll put the lead wires to connect the charger and the battery or the motor. Um, and then we can go about wrapping it and whatnot. Now the BMS is connected to all the cells with the balance wires. I've also soldered on uh, the leads for the motor and the charger. And I've also taken some of this capped on tape. It's uh, electrically insulated tape um, and I pretty much just put it all over any place that there is uh, some exposed metal or some connections. Uh, now that what's left to do is I'm going to heat shrink it with this heat shrink sleeve and then it'll be ready to be put into the case. Now that the battery's heat shrinked, I can get it ready to be put into its case. Uh, this case I designed in uh, 3D modeling software called uh, Tinkercad. It's free. Um, it's actually quite easy to do. Um, it's really the first time I ever designed anything and I picked it up quite quickly. I had to do a few iterations of prototypes. Uh, but this is what I ended up with 3D printing. I had to do it in two pieces because my 3D printer um, isn't big enough to do this whole entire uh, case in one go um, so it splits open and uh, it's nice lightweight but yet durable so uh, the way it's going to mount these are the holes that match up with the frame I'm going to use these uh, threaded inserts 
And what they are is they accept a screw into the uh, 3D printed plastic case and I just set them in to these holes uh, using an old soldering iron or some heat source to press them in. So now the battery is complete. I slid the battery into the case and uh, sealed up the seams with some silicone adhesive. I also ran a little bit of silicone around the edges to provide some waterproofing. Um, and also I siliconed where the uh, wires come out at the end here. So essentially this thing is waterproof now. Um, the way it's gonna mount into the frame, I'm gonna use the same mounting bolts or holes as the, the factory one. So these uh, holes on the factory one are M6 bolts here and here. Um, and then they uh, attach with these little things here into the frame uh, there. Uh, and then the water bottle ones are M5. What I did is I just used M5s for all these just because that's what I had. But uh, if you build one, I mean, you can put whatever size uh, screws you want in here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to mount this into the frame um, and stick them in with these things and secure them with the water bottle bolts. This is what it looks like down to down tube where the battery mounts. If I shine a light in there, you can see where the holes are. Um, and the battery is going to slide between uh, the cables there so and secure in those holes. So the battery is all screwed in and secure now. Um, this is the bottom here. So this is the bottom of the bike, the bottom tube, and you can see how the battery uh, makes contact with the frame there. So it's a perfect friction fit. So there's going to be no movement up and down um, or, or side to side because it uh, does uh, make contact with the sidewalls as well. So now I'm just going to have to connect the motor and we're good to go. So there you have it. The bike now weighs a hair under 40 pounds, which pretty much competes with the big boys like Specialized, uh, Levo SL, uh, the Trek Rail EXE, um, any of those lightweight, super lightweight bikes, uh, but this one is a fraction of the price. Plus the motor here, the Bafang M820, put, packs out, uh, I think it's 75 Newton meters of power. So this thing is, this thing's a beast. Um, I took it for a quick ride. Um, the trails here are muddy, so I can't really take it on a, uh, a trail ride yet, but uh, just riding it around a neighborhood, uh, I can really, it's super poppy. The front end's way easier to pull up now that it's lighter. Uh, and I'm sure it's just going to be a much more lively bike on the trail. Stay tuned. Uh, in the meantime, I'll probably be, uh, be tearing down the motor. I'm going to split it apart to grease it to see what it's like. The nice thing about the Bafang motors are they're user serviceable. So um, that'll probably be my next late video. See you later.